So polygons, the definition is that it's just a close shape with the same number of sides and angles. Okay. Uh, convex versus concave, you don't really have to worry about that one. But a concave polygon, it caves into itself, right, on page 50. I'm just going to make sure some of the students think polygons are something new. Uh, the ones you already know would be triangles, quadrilaterals, like all of the ones we studied, and, and all the gons. Uh, hexagon, pentagon, dodecagon, all those are polygons. They have specific names. So polygons, though, is the big umbrella that has everything under it. Okay, uh, so this is what I, where I want you to pay attention. Regular versus irregular polygon. That you do need to know the difference. And for something to be regular... We need all sides to be congruent. So all sides have to be the same in length. And the second condition is all angles have to be congruent as well. That is the prerequisite for uh, something to be called regular, a regular polygon. Okay. So here we have a triangle with all three sides that are the same. We know that as an equilateral triangle. Oops. And then we know it's regular. Why? Because all sides are the same, and therefore all the angles would be the same. We actually know in this case that it's 60 all around. Okay. Equilateral. That's a regular polygon. A square, if it has and all four, all four sides measure the same, and all angles are 90. We call that a square, but it would be under the regular polygon category. Okay. Anything that isn't, so I say this, if not, if you can't say yes to both of these statements, you get transferred into the irregular category. I'll make a line here, say like the left is regular, anything that you find on the right side is, would be considered irregular. So for example, an isosceles triangle, an isosceles would be considered irregular because it only has two sides that are equal. And yeah, you can even argue it has two angles that are equal, but that's it. Like it doesn't have the all part. A rectangle watch this if you look at the angles of a rectangle put boxes on all corners all angles are the same right so we can say okay check but not all sides are the same so fails therefore gets put in the irregular category and so that is uh, what you need to remember a rhombus, rhombus has all four sides the same, but not all four angles are the same. So it would also be here. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is important, uh, this part right here. If you have a red and a blue pen, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing here. And you'll see why in a bit. But all polygons have interior as well as exterior. I use E for that, right? Angles. And something worth highlighting is that the interior and the exterior angles are supplementary. In other words, they add up to 180. 
So here's what I mean by that, okay? One thing that's going to be very important to us is figuring out the number of sides. This, if you look at it, you should immediately, without any further information, determine that this is an irregular polygon. Because you can tell that not all angles are the same, not all sides are the same, okay? First, first and foremost. The number of sides, right, is called n in this unit. Number of sides is called n. So how many sides does this polygon have? Can I just suggest you put a little tick or check mark where you start counting? Because once you have like 12, 13, 14 or more sides, you may miss one. So do a check and it's like one, two, three, four, five. This one has five sides. And watch this. It will have five interior angles. So every single angle on the inside, triangle has three. This will have five. Put capital I's everywhere there. So it has five interior angles and it will have five exterior angles as well. But the exterior angles are a little trickier to find, guys. Um, so, but it's it's if you pay attention, it won't be. I'm gonna use a ruler, but you don't have to. This is how you find the exterior angle. So if this is your interior angle, you pick this side or this side, whichever one is touching it, and you extend that side. I'm gonna go like this and just go straight out. Like, so you travel along the side and then just keep going straight out. I make a dash so I can tell that it's not part of the shape. And then complete that semicircle. That is your exterior angle out there. And that happens all around this shape. So now I'm gonna travel along this side and when I hit the corner, I'm gonna keep going at about the same, right? Just straight line. And there's my exterior angle there. It will have five. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going here. like a water wheel or something. You pick any side, but it has to go, it has to line up with the slope of that line, okay? You can't just go off into space and just say, hey, this is my exterior angle. So five sides, five interior angles, and watch, one, two, three, four, five exterior angles. That is always gonna be the case for polygons. That the number of sides coincides with the number of interior angles and also with the number of exterior angles. And here it is one more time. The fact that wherever Wherever you have two sides meeting, right, you're gonna have the interior and the exterior form a 180 degree angle, like a supplementary angle. Do you see that all around? I hope you see a 180 all around. I plus E is 180 degrees. And maybe I'll give you one more hint. From this, you can actually, it helps you two ways. You ready? If, if you wanna know the interior angle, you just go 180 minus the exterior. Or if sometimes you wanna know the exterior because you know the interior, 
you're just going to go 180 minus i. So it goes, it goes both ways. Okay. okay, and here's another cool property. The sum of exterior angles is always 360. Regardless if regular or irregular, regardless of the number of sides. That is a pretty cool, so if it could, it could have 99 sides or 500 sides, it doesn't matter. If you were to add up all the exterior angles, it would always add up to 360. Okay, and I can tell you're not too impressed by that. That's okay. Um, maybe I'll just show you here. You don't have to actually sketch this, but if I were to go back to my equilateral triangle, and if I extend that, you have 120 out here, correct? Because they add up to 180. If you extend this here, you have 120. And if you extend this one, you have 120 as well. So these add up to, the exterior angles add up to 360. The same thing with a square. If this is, if that's 90, then this is going to be 90 as well, by the way. It's going to be 90 here as well. You have four 90s, right? Not impressed? That's okay. It's always 360. Okay. The exterior angle is always 360. Um, that's a pretty cool uh, property. Mr. Jackson, you, you don't know what cool is, obviously. But I know. All right. Keep going. Let's look at some formulas here. And before you uh, add these to your study sheet, I would like to just point out that these are all on your formula sheet. Because your, your study sheets are probably full or getting pretty full at this point. If you grab this formula sheet, you will get on the exam. You will rip it out from the, like at the very back of the exam. And these are found right there. Okay? Everything that has to do with a polygon is all bunched up in your formula sheet, okay? So you don't need to write these down. So, I just need to talk about what they mean. So the first thing I need you to uh, maybe consider is that in all of these formulas, whenever you see N, N stands for the number of sides. So we will often give you like... Uh, Sometimes we'll say a seven-sided polygon. Sometimes we will say a heptagon. Heptagon stands for seven sides. Okay. So if you want to know the sum, the sum of all the interior angles, you use this formula right here. And it looks a little scary. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll use it in a bit. If you wanted to know the measure of each interior angle, you use this formula. However, highlight this part. It This formula only works if it's actually a regular polygon, if all angles are the same. Okay. The central angle, right? See, this one here calculates the central angle, the measure of each in, uh, central angle. And again, it only works if it's a regular polygon, which most of them will be. The exterior angle, yes, they are exactly the same. You're not, I didn't make a mistake, right? But calculates the measure of each exterior angle, but all only works when there's a regular polygon. The first one doesn't matter, okay? The, the sum always works, but these three, I call them ice. You see that? I, C, E, I did that on purpose. Uh, these only work with regular polygons. And then D, 
the last one here, it calculates the number of diagonals that can be drawn. And can, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you just know how to use these formulas, sometimes you can just earn an easy mark. You just plug in, solve, boom, you've got the answer uh, quite often. All right, so um, let's, let's try these. Uh, let's put them to the test. Okay, how would we use these formulas? Ice right here can be identified on the, I will say that, um, Maybe, maybe I'll just show you. I won't add to this here. But let's go down to the first um, shape here. And um, it says label ice, like interior, central, and exterior. Then calculate all of those uh, angles or those formulas, like figure them all out, all those measurements, sum, interior, central, exterior, diagonals for the following regular polygons. So here's the first one. Count the number of sides. There's not a single number on there. Watch that. But now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to count here. One, two, three, four, five. N is equal to five. Five sides. That's the first thing you need to start off with. Before you do anything to a polygon, figure out how many sides. And now we're going to label first and foremost. Interior angle, I, any corner of your liking, you go to the corner and you just say, hey, this, Mr. Dirksen, that is an in one interior angle right there. I know where it is, full marks right there. Where is this? Uh, it says central and then exterior. I will do the exterior right away. So this is how you do it. This is not how you do it, guys. You're watching? Don't copy this. That's a lot. I see that a lot. So it's like, this is the exterior angle. That's wrong, okay? You have to line up with one of the sides, either this one or this one, and then you just keep going in the same direction as the side itself. This is my exterior angle right here. That's one of them. We know, we know that this repeats itself in every single corner, right? There's five of them, but you just need to show me one. Now the central, C stands for central. You go to the center and pick any side around that shape. I'm gonna pick this one here and you just go from the center to one side, to one of the ends of that side and then you go and connect to the center with the other end of that side. And we're not done yet. This, this right here is one central angle. There are actually, if you count how many sides again, five sides, right? There are actually five central angles in this shape. Okay. So there you have it. Time is flying. Okay, let's calculate real quick before you pack, okay? So if I wanted to find the sum of interior angles, sum, you use this one. It's n minus 2 times 180. What's n again? In this case, it's 5. So it's 5 minus 2 times 180 degrees. That's 3 times 180. That is, just copy this for now, 540 degrees, okay? So you're saying that all the interior angles in this shape add up to 540 degrees. We're not done yet. Interior. That's this, I is equal to N minus two times 180. It's exactly the same as the sum except for here you're going to divide by the number of sides. So it's 5 minus 2 times 180 over 5. That's 3 times 180. Make sure you copy this before you go, okay? 3 times 180 over 5. 
I know that 3 times 180 is 540. You divide that by 5, you get 108 degrees. I'm going to do the exterior here. Exterior angle is simply taking 360 and dividing it by the number of sides. So it's 360 divided by 5. Three sixty divided by five is seventy two degrees. What do these two add up to, guys? Interior and exterior. Look at them side by side. One eighty. I told you that, didn't I tell you that already? That they always add up to one eighty. Okay, it's pretty cool that it it works out that way. S I. Central angle, hold on, central, 360 divided by N. Central is 360 divided by 5, which is 72 degrees. And D we're going to do tomorrow, otherwise <clears throat> we'll run out of time. It's the number of diagonals that can be drawn, but we'll do that tomorrow. For homework, just focus on quadrilaterals like kites, trapezoids, if you need more practice. We'll do this more of this tomorrow, okay? Have a good one, guys. Thank you.